Yeah, so to continue, today we're going to talk about association and correlation. I'm just going to quickly recap uh, what we've covered so far. So originally, we set out to discover whether Imperial Stormtroopers are different from Republic clone troopers of the past. And hopefully you've all done the necessary background reading that that statement now makes some sense. We did a set of uh, data analysis on some hypothetical experiments and tested some hypotheses against a significant level of 0.05%. And we found that there was no statistically significant difference between the height of clone troopers and storm troopers. Uh, and we tested that using a t-test, which is a parametric test, that relies on the normal distribution, and found that they were, there was a 72% chance that they, uh, the, the heights of the two groups originated from the same distribution. And under the Mann-Whitney U-test, which uh, makes no assumption of the form of the distribution, although it does make other assumptions, we found a 56% chance that the uh, data, or 56% probability that the results could have come from the same distribution. But when we looked at the weight of the two groups, it was found uh, with a t-test that there was a significant, statistically significant difference, uh, 0.04 and 0.03 under the Man whitney u test. And so then we did uh, a little bit more investigation and decided to see if there were any non-clones amongst the ranks of stormtroopers. And because we had budgetary constraints, we decided to use dental arch measurements. And we found that when we compared all of our, or a large sample of uh, stormtroopers, there was a statistically significant difference between at least one of those and the rest of the group. Um, and analysis of variance gave us a probability of 0.02, the so 2% probability that there was no difference between, the, um, between any of them. Although when we went to expert opinion, we found that there was no significant difference. And that was assessed, uh, the, the opinion of many experts and um, many storm, uh, having an, analysed many stormtroopers was assessed using the non-parametric Kruskal Wallace test. But then looking at the post hoc Tukey test, we were also able to group the, um, not the non clone or the different stormtroopers. The storm, we were able to identify which stormtroopers were different and we were able to group them and found that they actually bore statistical similarity to uh, just the general cohort of humans who aren't clones. There was a 96% probability that, they, that those two, the different stormtroopers and the non-clone humans came from the same group. And so this supported the idea that there were indeed non-clones within the Stormtrooper ranks. And then so to summarise, we found that Stormtroopers tended to be heavier than Republic clones. This led us to some further research and the subsequent discovery that not all stormtroopers appear to be clones. Although, as we discussed, the measurement technique could be improved. There was uncertainty in that, in that method. And so perhaps we would need to go down the road of um, some form of genetic DNA testing. That leads us to a form of discussion. What does this mean? This, this result mean that um, we found that there might be non 
clone stormtroopers? Uh, does this ex does this explain our weight anomaly? Um, are there other questions that then th this leads us to? That do we have more questions as a result of the analysis that's been done, or in fact, have we answered all of the questions and we can pack up and go home and forget this story business? We've discovered that, or we believe now, that not all stormtroopers are clones. So what? Well, if you remember, the original research question was to do with anecdotal evidence that stormtroopers seem to behave differently. Well, there seems to be some differences that we couldn't put our finger on between stormtroopers and clones. Republic clone troopers of the past. And so in measuring physical characteristics, we find that the weight differs. And so that supports this idea, well, there may be some differences, some underlying differences. And that led us to investigate why the weight might, may differ. And one possible reason that the weight could differ is that um, there are non-clones. So we tested that, and indeed there were non-clones. So is that, do we, is that wrapped up now? Can we be sure that all of the weight difference we've observed has come from the non-clone infiltrators? No, I don't think I, I don't, I don't think it does. I mean, all we know is really that there are non-clones. That's all we've got. We don't really know whether they contribute to the weight difference at all. So uh, then we can ask ourselves, well. Um, do non-clones account for the observed weight difference? In fact, does the weight difference still exist when we exclude non-clones? How could we test this? How could we set up an, a new experiment? What, what might we do? Define some exclusion criteria. Sounds like a good plan. So let's set up a new experiment where we exclude non-clones. Now, fortunately, the Emperor has released extra funding for our experiment, so we've been able to invest in full gene sequencing equipment or whatever you need. Um, so we'll um, we'll exclude on clones based on DNA. And so then once we've got our basic question, we've designed some kind of well, okay, materials and methods, um, we can set up a, a null hypothesis. Um, quite simply, I, I suggest that, we ex uh, that excluding non-clones, there is no difference between the weight of stormtroopers and Republic clone troopers. Because to my mind, if I've excluded the clones and then I find no difference, then I've identified the source of my weight anomaly. However, if I find that the weight anomaly still exists, or a weight anomaly still exists, then the non-clones weren't the sole um, cause. They may have accounted for some of it, but they may have, I can't say that it was the sole, sole cause. So, in my materials and methods, I'm going to say we're going to sample uh, n equals 200 each of stormtroopers and uh, Republic clones. 
Remember, the Rep Republic clones are from a past era, so I'm going to have to obtain that data from medical records or, or something. And then I'm going to have to exclude, I'm going to have to make the assumption, so I'm going to have to assume all uh, Republic clones are clones. So I'm going to have to assume that I haven't got any infiltrators in the Republic uh, clones. Our previous experiment lends support to that. And I'm going to DNA test for the stormtroopers to make sure that I have excluded at least out the stormtroopers. Something like that. And so once I've set up uh, the basics of my experiment, and, I, I, and, and maybe the, if, if anyone thinks of anything they want to add to this, please feel to um, advance my experimental method. Or if anyone wants to critique it, you're more than welcome. But that's going to be the basic, the basic idea. And so now... I, I come on to think, okay, if I collect all this data, how am I going to test it? What, what's my uh, analytical method going to be? So let, let's say we're going to use a t-test. T-test, compare to means. And we might justify this on, on the basis that we've collected n equals 200 from each group. So even if the distributions aren't perfectly normal, uh, they start to approach normality for the purposes of the test. And if you do any reading of the literature that I've suggested, they give um, some indicative threshold values for using things like the t-test, parametric tests. If you've got large samples above around 20, they suggest that the p-values start to tend towards um, those you get with normal distribution, even if you don't have normal distribution. Although there's even some caveats in there, and you should go and read some literature around around that subject, or just read the book. You could have quite validly also suggested a man with the U test. There would be nothing wrong with making that suggestion. And you could have justified that on the basis that we don't know the distribution of the data. So there's no harm in suggesting either of those. Both are equally valid. Really, you want to tell me why you've chosen to use one of those tests. As, um, and you also want to be clear as to what those tests are looking at. So a, a t-test compares the means. So what you're actually testing is whether the sample means come from the same distribution. So you're, if you, your null hypothesis, um, or null hypothesis you're testing, is that the sample means come from the same distribution. So this, are the sample means the same? Whereas a man whitney u test, you're testing more generally whether the data comes from the same underlying distribution. Does one, tend to, one set of data tend to have uh, different values to another? So there are slight subtleties in what the two tests um, are looking at. Although generally speaking, they are uh, one is the man with the U test is simply the non-parametric version of the T test. 